Cyberbrainer is an online training platform designed to help individuals and teens learn the latest technologies and become certified professionals producing a comprehensive learning experience. I'm taking only the higher business process and I'm filtering for the higher business process. There we saw it at a higher business process level. Here we are seeing only for the manager security group. For a manager security group in the higher business process, what are the operations that I can perform? It's going to be available in my business process. Security policy permissions. Clear with everybody. Are we clear, or you want me to explain it again, because this is kind of the same that we saw as a manager or in the higher business process policies, whatever we saw over there. Let me go across to the business process policy for hire and wherever we saw manager. This is exactly what it is from there. We are seeing it over here. So, first up, I'm saying hire business, hire employee. I'm going to initiate it as a manager. Sorry, as a manager, I can initiate this. Right. And I go back to my role-based security group and I say, initiate hire employee. The same what is available over here in my business process security policy for a hire, I say initiating access action as hire employee, and I say security groups. One of the security groups is manager. And if I go across to the related actions of the manager, you will say this is our role-based security group. Security group name is manager. Assignable role is manager. And this is precisely what you see over here as well. Clear how I'm just getting all of this or where exactly this comes from. Same for all the other actions as well. And just to give you a trivia, we saw about role-based and next we are going to be seeing about user-based, but we do have so many other different types of security groups. But for now, I want to only concentrate on role-based security groups and user-based role-based and user-based security groups. I do not want to go into the other ones because that's going to be very, very challenging and, at the same time, it's going to be quite vast for you at this time. So I want to go and lead touch base upon user-based security groups and role-based security groups. I'm not going across to any of the other security groups at this moment. So now I'm going to be picking another one. Let me pick a security admin. And then I will teach you what exactly a user-based security group is. All right. So we saw about role-based security group. So what do you mean by a role-based security is I'm going to be creating a specific role so that I can tag it to one or more of my organization types, which could be like a location or a supervisory organization or a cost center. This is the way I'm going to be having a security group assigned at a specific role level. Because I see that I create a security group, that security group. I am going to be tagging it to a specific role at a super cost center location hierarchy level, and then I'm going to be tagging people. That is what is called as a role-based security group. Now, what I'm going to be seeing next is a user-based security group. And what I mean by a user-based security group is there could be certain roles or certain security groups.
let me not say roles. Let me say only use the word security groups. So I could have certain roles which are going to be organization-wide, which means I could have one or more people assigned at an entire organization level for my entire Amazon or Facebook. Facebook. I could have only a couple of people, or just a handful of people who are assigned as security admins in the workday tenant, who are going to be taking care of all the security related issues. I could have only a handful of people who are like HR admins, payroll admins, and they are the top, most super user level people, and they are going to be the ones who are going to be handling all the administrative level security. And I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. So I'm going to be using the same role-based security group. Whereas when I say user-based security group, I will create one user, which is at an entire enterprise-wide. It's not going to be just at a company cost center location supervisory organization level for the entire organization, entire entity. I'm going to be having only specific users assigned as user-based security group. So this is directly assigned to my user. So if I go over here and find out my user-based security group, I have a security admin and I am going to be using this only for a handful of people only, which is at an entire Please do like, share and subscribe to our channel.